Holloway of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Uh, welcome to the offices of Duke and Duke, 100 South Broad Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Let's take a look at the German DAX to start the day. As you can see, had a little bit of a bounce here, but that's not the important one, folks. The important one to look at here is the FTSE because Theresa May supposedly is going to come out and save the day with a new Brexit announcement. Gee whiz, the politicians just keep bringing us wonderful things to trade with. The other one we want to focus on, of course, folks, is the gold. I had it from a very reasonable source, and I do mean reasonable, that Blue Horseshoe loves the gold. However, the gold does not love Blue Horseshoe. Silver and platinum are still holding up, but we did go below the 78% level in the gold at 1274. We made a new low today. Don't know whether it means anything or not. The GDX hasn't opened yet. But uh, we'll see how that's been moving because it's had higher bottoms all along and been going higher. So we'll see. The silver's not violated the old uh, 1435 an ounce yet. But, you know, these things could fail. And when they fail, they usually fail badly. So let's make a uh, let's make a note of that. That's very important to look at. I have to cover the Bradley thing again, but before we do that, folks, I wanted to uh, bring to your attention something uh, that's going on in the grain markets. I wanted to post here this weekly chart that we have here in the um, the, the corn, as you can see here, when we got down to that 364 level, we rallied 45 cents an ounce, <laughs> 45 cents a bushel uh, in the corn uh, so far. We're almost at the 78% retracement on the weekly basis. That comes in at 410, but uh, this is a weather market that we've got going now. And it is, uh, it could continue uh, for quite some time. It could also stop on a dime. I think there's going to be some resistance up here at 410 because the farmers that didn't hedge down there uh, now are able to get back in the in the red in the uh, in the green, and at least they're not going to lose money on the crop if they if they hedge up in here. However, you know if it's a really bad weather market, you know corn could go to five six dollars. You don't know, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. All we know that some of these grains and commodities have made some type of a bottom down here that looks uh, very very interesting for sure. Um, I wanted to go over the uh, Bradley model one more time because I had several questions about it that really confused a lot of people. And believe me, I don't like to be confused because uh, that's how I usually wake up in the morning. But let's just walk through this for a second here, and I will tell you what I know about it, which is uh, not, uh, not a lot, but enough to get myself in trouble. This is the usual Bradley model that uh, Donald Bradley uh, wrote on his little book. A stock market prediction in 1947. It's basically what he did. He weighted the 10 planets, either positive or negative, based on the work that was done at Yale University on uh, astrophysics and stuff. That stuff is still in vogue today. But as you see on this particular one, uh, it does follow very nicely from uh, February up into September, September down into January, January up into May. Now, all I did. Uh, yesterday, it, it, just to show you some of the things that I'm working at here, is I just moved this over one week is all I did. Uh, seven trading, well, five trading days. I just moved the Bradley model market over just to see what it looked like. And you can see that from the December 26 low to the May 1st high was nearly perfect. So I assume that if it's going to keep doing this, it's going to come down into June 14th, which is about three weeks out. So that's what I was particularly looking at. Now, when Bradley, you know, did this work, you know, he only did it for two years. Uh, he did it for uh, 1946 and 1947. Nobody even touched it after that. It wasn't until uh, I was with Dr. Miller down in uh, Florida 
uh, learning to do some of this astro stuff in 1986, 33 years ago. Uh, we had Jim Twentyman doing the computer work for us there in Pismo Beach, uh, California. And uh, remember, computers were not like they were 33 years ago back in those days, but we did have access to all the data. And so what we did is we programmed 100 years of the Bradley just to see how well it correlated, and it correlated very well. Some years it was nearly perfect, but the fact that it could do it year after year was the thing that was the absolute most amazing. So the Bradley dates do mean something. Um, you know, all I try to do is I match the patterns up with them, and I trade the patterns whether the Bradley model's there or not, but when I do see a Bradley date, that's what, uh, that's what I really like to see when all things line up together. And then one other thing that I wanted to mention to you as we were doing the, uh, the Bradley work, we were also watching how the planets lined up with the transits. In other words, what they look like in the sky from a geocentric, you know, Earth-centered eye, eyesight. So as you'll notice here, this is the March 5th, 2009 bottom. Uh, you remember that was the bottom in the stock market. You know, the S&P was trading at the old devil's uh, Devil's Latitude 666 on that day. And, uh, you know, you can see that all of these planets, uh, the, all the major ones were lined up right in that uh, that whole area. So that means all those cycles were coming together at a, a really important time. So what we did, we didn't have this, of course, 30 some years ago, but we looked at bottoms like this, like we had in 1974 in the stock market, like we had in 1982 in the stock market, the top in August of uh, 1987 in the stock market, and we saw the same type of transits. We'd lining up in the same areas, you know, of the, the uh, transit chart. So that's all I'm saying when I look at that is that no, there must be something happening here with the cycles. Now that is what it's saying. Well, it, what it's saying now is we're heading down into June the 14th. That's what it says. And I, there's a couple of things that I watch really closely on a negative basis, and they confirmed uh, yesterday that they were still negative, even though we've had a 30-point handle uh, rally. Now, let's look at that. Let's look, just take a look at the rally that we had yesterday in the old stop and P. You'll see that, uh, let's just get it up so we can take a look at it real easy here. Hold on just a second. Well, let's look at the, let's look at the, um, Shut the front door and raise your hand. We'll look at the Dow Jones first because that's the one that I picked up. Any trans? Yes, there's all kinds of stuff coming in there, but I don't know what the transit chart looks like there, Mr. Z. If I told you that, my friend, as Mr. Bond would say, I would have to kill you. By the way, those of you that get the videos from me uh, on the 24-7 uh, uh, stuff, uh, I am trying to change it from Avi to MP3. I'm having a lot of problem. I know you can't use it on your iPhones and iPads with that, but I might not have any anything to do with it, so I don't really know uh, what's going to happen. All right, let's look at this S&P yesterday because this was a really good example of, of patterns. This is a 15-minute chart. You see the Sunday night high up there, which was a 61% retracement of the high that we made on Friday. Uh, we then broke down to a double 78% level. We came down and made a new low on the day by one tick, right at the 78% level, and the market rallied 28.50, and it's still going. We're up to uh, 28.63, and the area we're looking at is 28.66, as we say in the trade. 877-927-6648. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, uh, we posted the chart of the hourly chart of the NASDAQ to show you this bullishness that we're seeing in the market. It's just absolutely overwhelming, folks. It's just, uh, it takes your breath away. You'll notice here that the NASDAQ has reached the 38% uh, retracement level in just a matter of a few hours as the Dow Jones and the S&Ps have gone up to these near 61% retracement levels. Whether that means anything or not, I don't know, but I'm just technically looking that uh, there might be something that one would take a, uh, an eye on if they're watching it. So let's just keep an eye on that. We have another one, folks, that is in the crosshairs, and that is coming from across the, the pound over in uh, the U.K., I mentioned about uh, Theresa May uh, getting ready to do her thing. If we take a look here at the British pound, I wanted to just bring this up to you uh, the ABCD structure on this measures to uh, 20, uh, 12690. The low was 12688. We rallied a little bit since that level, but that's not the important thing uh, to look at. If you look at this chart and study it, it'll give you really a lot of information. You can see going back to July, all of the ABCD. CD patterns that were there that, uh, you know, worked relatively well. Now, certainly we know that ABC patterns don't work all the time, but far better than, you know, 60% of the time they do work. Uh, the question is what you have to do is when they don't work is just don't stand in front of it. And that's the, the really uh, super key uh, to pay close attention to it. But let's do something a little bit different today since I can try to keep this entertaining uh, a little bit more than or, or than normal. I'm going to bring up the uh, the chart of the British pound, and we're really going to look at this together, folks. Let me get this up here, uh, get this daily chart up so we'll be able to see it. Uh, what I want you to look at now is that, uh-oh, uh, uh -oh, shut the front door and raise the rent. It didn't come up the way I wanted it. Just a minute. Maybe we can get it right. There we got it. Hold on just a second. There we go. Get this up here and take a quick look at it. All right. Going back to last August, we made a low in the British pound. We rallied from uh, the 126 up to 133. We came down and made a new low in January at uh, 124. Uh, that was the head. The shoulder was up there. The shoulder, you remember, was at 126. Where are we at right now? 126.89. You'll notice that was the 
That was the D point, 126.89, and that completed the ABCD. It also completes an, a head and shoulders pattern, and it's a perfect one. And the reason why it's perfect is your left shoulder, shoulder over there in August was trading at 126 and change. The right shoulder is trading where? boys and girls yes mr rogers says 126 and change not only that we're down 12 days in a row and that in itself is something very interesting and let's just look at it just a little bit closer and we'll pull this up so we can uh we can see this maybe uh hold on one second i have it here i think i have it here i think i can i think i can hold on just a minute what happened to it please don't tell me i really spent so much time getting that ready are you joking me Ah, here we go. Here's what I want to see. Just get it up here. We'll take a look at it. Let's just look at this closely here. Go back to uh, November of last year. You'll notice the market came down 14 days, then had a really strong rally. Look at it in December. The market came down 14 days, had a really strong rally. Look at it in February. From January into February the 10th, the market came four, down 14 days and then rallied up. And here we are, we're down 13 days today, and we're due for a rally. So we're right near these levels, so pay attention to the British pound. That number, the ABCD, ended at 126.90. We're trading at one little above 127 now, 127.20, whatever it was. Last time I checked whether that's going to be the bottom or not, I don't know. All I know is that it has a very interesting uh, time parameter here to take a look at it. So we'll see. All right, here's one other thing that I missed to talk to you about. Remember when I showed that transit chart, this one right here, I just wanted to get this up here to show you what it looked like. There's the transit chart from March the 5th of 2009. Now let's take a look at the Bradley model from uh, March the 5th, 2009. Those of you uh, that I had been doing the show about two years, and I said this was going to be the strongest Short covering rally in the stock market since 1938 is what I said. This is really going to be big. Uh, little did I know we were going to go to 27,000 in the Dow Jones. So the S&P was trading at, 20, at 66, 666 that day. I, I don't remember what the Dow was. I think the Dow was 6,400. Yeah, the Dow was around 6,400. So um, it's had a heck of a rally. Anyway, this was what it looked like. You'll see the three drive to a bottom. Coming in exactly on the date. Now, I, you know, some of these astrology things don't work, but when they line up like this, you pay a little bit of attention to them. You know, at least I think you should. Uh, that's just my, my two. I don't know if you folks find this interesting or not, but I thought because I had two emails about it, somebody had an interest in it, so I, I wanted to uh, bring it to your attention to uh, let you know uh, what we're what we're looking at here as we go through. So. Okay, let's take a uh, – the platinum is still holding up, but, uh, you know, by a, by a breath's hair, we did get down to the uh, – pull this up here. We did get down to the eight uh, the 810 level. That was the exact number. Uh, silver still holding. It is is a platinum at 809 now? Did it get down to 809? Because that 810 was a low. I don't know if it's going to break down below that. So uh, – I haven't been able to check that. So, Terry, I guess it is at 809. All right, so let's just go. Uh, that might be failing, too. We don't know. So just have to wait and see one thing at a time. You know, sometimes they work. Sometimes they don't. That's the, the key to what you're looking at here. All right, I wanted to uh, bring it to your attention. Another one that looks really interesting here that is uh, pretty much already happened. Uh, oh, is there anybody? Okay, Mr. Z is asking, I was in the Tiger's Den runner in some sort. Please explain your purpose in restating that you did today. The reason why I brought this stuff together is because I'll slow down. The reason why I brought this stuff together was because some people asked me about the Bradley model and what I was trying to say. I don't do a very good job explaining it sometimes because it's a tiny bit over my pay grade, like about 35 levels. But I know enough about it that if it matches up with the patterns, that gives me a tiny bit of an edge. And all I was trying to do is showing historically what that edge was. Now, if I had time and I, I don't have time to do it in the show today, I could go back and show you 1982. I could show you 1987. I could show you 1974, the double bottom in October and December. So that's why I'm showing you. Someday, 
long after this old cowboy is gone, there's going to be a segment on CNBC and Bloomberg, and they're going to be talking about the astroharmonic cycles in the market brought to you by Harvard, MIT, Stanford, uh, Renaissance Capital. Well, they won't tell you anything, but, you know, some uh, erudite school is going to come up and say, look at the relationships between these planetary things that are nothing more than cycles than where we are. Uh, Andrew Lowe has already alluded to this in his book, The Evolution of Technical Analysis. He spent 50 pages in that book, the first 50 pages, describing how the first technicians were astrologers. So to me, that means something. Whether it means anything, I don't know. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Com now. The art of timing the trade charts has a special running for one week only. From now through Memorial Day, you can save 25% off your first month and we'll ship you a hardcover copy of Tom O'Brien's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade. The Art of Timing the Trade, your ultimate trading mastery system. This software package is the fastest, easiest, and most accurate way to analyze stocks using Tom O'Brien's trading philosophy. It automatically provides you with Gartley and Butterfly patterns, swing points, retracement levels, confluence areas, expansion targets, and the power law vector indicator with just the click of a mouse. The scanner searches thousands of stocks each day and delivers a list of every Gartley and Butterfly pattern it finds automatically. Just enter the promo code BOOK at checkout. This sale ends Memorial Day, May 27th, so don't let it pass you by. For all the details and to save 25% and get your free book shipped today, check out the art of timing the trade charts on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're back, and uh, we have made the 809 level in the um, platinum. The big number we're looking at was 810, so it's 809. Well, Back to the old 200-day crossing the 400-day moving average, folks. We'll have to wait for a turn in that. Uh, that was sort of what we call a tongue-in-cheek technical joke, which I do very poorly at. So let's just keep that in mind. Uh, also, we have this uh, grain markets moving pretty good to the upside. 
If you're going to short something in the grain, folks, I would suggest you take a look at soybeans. It's the weakest of the group. There should be strong resistance in Christmas corn at the uh, 411 uh, level. Now, that's just a technical number. It's a 78% uh, retracement number going back uh, a long way. And so pay uh, very, very close attention to it. Uh, we got as high as uh, uh, 410 today. Uh, the number is 411. So whether that means anything or not, you know, have to remain to, to be seen. But we've been up for nine days now. So uh, even though it's a weather market, it still might have a correction of a penny or two. So pay uh, pay close attention to it. We'll take a, a look at that. Now, the uh, the GDX is still still uh, selling way above the lows that were made on May 1st down at at 2016. Uh, that you know that's the one that we were watching for the divergence that we were seeing uh, in the GDX. That uh, why we were we were buying this on Monday because if you take a look at this, you'll notice that uh, the buy was at uh, 2043. Uh, we're trading at 2052 right now. And uh, whether that's going to hold up or not, I don't know. I'm going to, uh, if gold breaks below the uh, 1267 uh, uh, level, I'm going to uh, exit that and take a, you know, because these are not, they're not turning up like they should. And that's usually a, a, a very bad sign. Uh, the crude oil is, is now broken a dollar from the 78, 61% retracement level that we talked about yesterday at the, uh, uh, if you'll remember, that was at the uh, $64 uh, level. Get this up here. You'll be able to see it very, very clearly. This comes from our good friend across the pond, Mr. A.S., and uh, it went right up to that uh, number, hit it exactly, and then it's backed off uh, just about a dollar a barrel right now. Whether that means anything, you know, we'll just have to uh, wait and see. I want to check something here before we get farther along in the day, and that is to take a look at the... Uh, uh, just one second. I want to double check the. Uh, hold on, just a minute here. Boy, oh boy, this is not good. I want to check the silver. Just want to see how much silver is getting hit by. There's just no. There's just no action going in these things, folks. Uh, silver still. Uh, it still made a new low. We went to uh, well, made the same low. Uh, 435.50. We're now at 438. Um, it's still it's still in there. Just uh, be patient and see whether it works or not. You know, some days it works, some days it doesn't. That's uh, the bottom line uh, to pay attention to. So just keep a close eye on that. Um, Oh, what other one thing? Oh, someone asked a question here just a minute ago here uh, by uh, private message by Skype about. Am I still bearish the stock market? No, I'm not still bearish the stock market. I'm really bearish the stock market. So that's my two cents worth. But remember, two cents doesn't come with any change, boys and girls. That's the key thing to remember. All right, let's uh, move on here just a little bit to a couple other things that uh, some people have asked us about. And one of those, of course, has been the uh, Hang Seng Index. I, I wanted to bring this up to your attention. This is one of the things that <laughs> really doesn't look very good, folks. Uh, this is, uh, you'll notice here that we, this is a weekly chart, uh, excuse me, a daily chart of the Hang Seng. You'll you notice we went up to that 61% retracement. We stayed there for two weeks where they were, you know, doing a little bit of selling. <laughs> and uh, look what's happened now. We're trading, but we're almost at 20, uh, breaking 26,000. We're 27,200 as of uh, yesterday. It gapped down again. And uh, so that was a uh, three weeks of a rally that uh, was not, uh, three, excuse me, a three-day rally that really, really didn't go anywhere. So those are the kind that you want to uh, to be very, very careful of from the long side. Take a look. Ruby wants us to take a look in um, coffee, cocoa, and coffee and cocoa and sugar. Let's do them all, Ruby, because nobody else cares what we're doing here. So let's just get up here and take a look at the old, we'll start off with the sugar, the sweet. And as usual, we're going to go to our, our October sugar and get it up here. And uh, I don't know if it's breaking down. It doesn't look like it's breaking. Uh oh, maybe I don't have an updated this morning. If it's below, uh, if it's below 12, it's do it doesn't look very good, Ruby. Let's give me one second here to um, get this chart up so you folks can take a quick look at it. Here's the uh, here's the sugar. I don't know the last price because I use I use. Uh, 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 data one day uh, on coffee, cocoa, and sugar because I don't trade them very much actually. So uh, let's take a look here at uh, coffee, and uh, let's just look up here at the coffee. 
Uh, yeah, the coffee's the same way. The coffee has to, uh, yeah, see, the, the, the platinum just broke 809, folks. Just one second here. Hold on just a minute. Everybody's coming to me at the same time. Just give me a second here. I'm getting notices that something's not right. Uh, hold on just a second here. All right, uh, just a second. I've got to do a couple of technical things, otherwise it's going to drive me nuts. My limit minder is going off on platinum because we broke 809, and whether that means anything or not probably does because we're at 808. Uh, anyway, if you're in that GDX, keep your stop working, and uh, you know we'll see what happens. Okay, let's move on to the next one uh, was the uh, coffee. Um, here again, I'm not updated here, but my guess is if we're below 88 in the coffee, we're most probably getting ready to uh, to go down and uh, break those levels out. You'll notice here uh, on the coffee, hold on to a second here, you'll see that it's got really strong support at 87. If we break below 87, uh, that's about it. The cocoa looks a little bit better. Uh, let's just get it up, and then we will move on to some of these other things that the uh, the, the other folks have an interest in. Uh, yeah, cocoa looks pretty good. It's uh, Well, it had a good day yesterday. I don't know what it's doing today, but uh, cocoa still looks like it's got legs to the upside. So, you know, we'll see whether that's going to be the right thing or not. Let's just get this up here, and, and we'll take a look at the cocoa. And uh, you'll see that it's still holding up relatively well. So of the three, uh, here we are at 12. We broke 1270 now in the S and in the Dow in the uh, uh, in the uh, the gold market. And we'll we'll see if that's going to mean anything. It certainly does if you're long. Uh, the GDX. Uh, let's just double check to see how the GDX is trading this morning. It was down a little bit, and I just don't know if we're down to the same level that we bought it at. Uh, no, we bought it at uh, 2043. Uh, it's at 2049. Uh, we haven't taken out yesterday's low yet, but I'm sure we're going to, given the fact that we're having this move here uh, in the gold and silver. So this looks like uh, this is not going to work, but uh, keep your stop in because you don't know. And uh, even when you know, you don't know. Okay, the question that Mr. Z is asking us here in the room is that kindly show the uh the December crude oil chart where 411 comes from. You betcha, my friend, I will do that because we were putting a little selling in there at 410. We never got filled. Hold on just a second. At least I haven't yet. Uh, oh, dear. Don't tell me I took that corn chart out. I did. I'll post that corn chart right after the break. 877-927-6648. in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying Diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. 
start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. All right, folks, I posted the weekly chart of the Christmas corn, December. That's new crop corn, and I've mentioned that the 78% level comes in here somewhere between 410 and 411. The strategy here was to, because we've had a really strong rally here right in the midst of this, and believe me, this is a strong rally, uh, that you don't have to risk very much here from the short side. I wouldn't do this for the Widows and Orphans Fund, of course, but I would certainly take a look at this from a risk-reward relationship here because we've got all kinds of bearish news out there today, and the market's hardly higher at all. And I finally did get filled at uh, 410 level in the corn. I have a stop at 413. I'm risking $150. So I'm controlling $20,000 worth of corn for 150 bucks. Whether it'll be right or wrong, I don't know. But that's what I look at. I'm just looking at a very strong resistance up there. Eh, it's my opinion that there's strong resistance there. So that's uh, one of the things... Uh, that uh, we are keeping a eye on. Another one that's interesting today, folks, from an ABCD structure, of course, uh, is the uh, Treasury bond market. Um, do you have the British pound going back to 1985? Uh, you know, Mr. Z, uh, I tell you what I'll do. Uh, you know, I'll, let me do this first, and then we will look at we'll look at that British pound going back to going back that far to see if uh, you. Know, so see if we're able to do it, but I, I wanted to uh, to bring the uh, Treasury bond. Oh, please tell me I've got this Treasury bond chart. Uh, maybe not. Uh, shut the front door. I don't think I do. What happened to it? Uh, no, I don't have the Treasury bond uh, chart. Uh, shucks. All right, let's just move on and let's try to get this chart up here for the British pound for Mr. Z and for all of us to see because we'll all learn something together. It will kill a little time, make my job a tad easier. So we'll look at the monthly chart and we're going to go back. Oh, by golly, by gosh, I think we have it. Yes, we do. Let's get her up here and you'll be able to see this thing going. Let's move up here. Here comes the let's let me do it through, send it through the uh, chart service first, my friend. That way it'll be a lot easier and everybody can see it, and we can discuss it. I don't trade monthly charts, of course, but uh, we can at least learn something from it. And uh, it should be popping up here somewhere on the old. Uh, here we are. These, there we go. Here's the chart for the British pound going back to 1985. That was the Plaza Accord back there, folks. Uh, bond was, it was trading uh, about 105. I was sitting there in Pismo Beach, California, with a couple of traders. One being was uh, Byron Tucker, uh, Eddie Horowitz, and one other very famous fellow. And you'll notice that that 1.58 was really close to the 1.618 from the low in 1975. Uh, and uh, Byron loaded the boat. And we, I bought a little, but he he put up the boat and uh, that thing took off like a stripe of deer. It moved 10 or 12 points before a person could even uh, realize something was happening. And of course the market went from uh, 105 basically up to uh, 150 
before it had a correction down to 145 and then continued to go higher, making its final high back at 210 back in 2008, right before the big collapse. And now we're down here, what we think is a pretty major bottom in the British pound. Whether it is or not, uh, I don't know, but it's got all the characteristics of that. So, no, uh, I had, I had a, I didn't have a, uh, a boat, uh, David. I had one of those little Mickey Mouse, uh, uh, well, it's actually a little duck, a little rubber duck raft with a hole in the middle. That's like a life raft, and I, I hatched, I latched onto a little. Bit. I got a little bit of it, but the Byron was extremely bullish uh, at that time, and that was a, a really, really monster move. As I recall, I was going through a divorce at that time, and I was not in any mood to uh, be doing any trading, and I, I wasn't. I had just well, anyway, long story. You don't need to hear that. Okay, let's move on to a couple other things that uh, I wanted to share this with you because I thought it was important enough last night to put in, and that was this NASDAQ chart. The fact that uh, you'll see this, uh, uh, we had these, uh, you'll see the move that we had on uh, the Friday. Uh, that Sunday night move was equal to the one we had on Monday. But look at this move here, folks. We, we were only able to make the 38% retracement of the high from Sunday night on the NASDAQ, at least so far. But that that could be something that is relatively uh, relatively negative. So we'll have to uh, just do one thing at a time to see if that's going uh, to to work that way. All right. Now let's see what else. Dick, what else do we have? Oh, by the way, those of you that want to, I'm going to do a very 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 mini mini web web uh, web program for half an hour for stockcharts.com. That's going to be tomorrow at uh, around noon. If you want to go, just go to stockcharts.com and you can log on. And I think you'll be able to watch it. Those of you that are here every day, you really don't need to do it because, you know, I repeat this stuff over and over again. So you probably don't need to to listen to it. I'm just going to show where some of these numbers come from and you know talk about. Uh, actually, we're going to be talking about the the gold market with Blue Horseshoe. Anyway, we'll. Uh, if you want to listen to that, you're certainly welcome. I am going to be doing a webinar here. Uh, for TFNN here in the next couple of weeks where I'm going to do a one-hour uh, show going through the history of these numbers, where they come from, how they get there, and try to put some things in perspective with cycles and numbers to give you a better idea of some of the things that we're looking at here. But uh, again, that won't be for uh, a couple of weeks. Okay, we've had a question about the, uh, the FANG stocks again, and one of them that we uh, haven't uh, covered uh, too much uh, in the last couple of days is Google, and that's at a really critical level, folks. If we take a look at the Google here, uh, this last rally we had only went to the 382. If Google, I don't know where Google's trading right now, but if it's not above 1185, uh, that stock's got problems. Uh, could someone check where Google is right now? Because I do not know, and I would, but 1185 is the key level. If we get Google above 1185, then it's got a pretty good chance. But if it doesn't, it's going to look pretty, pretty nasty. And uh, that's neither either here nor there. It's 1146. Are you joking me? Wow. And I was saying 1185. Boys and girls, let me tell you something. That's why, the, uh, that's why this NASDAQ is so weak, because these big stocks, the leaders of the pack, they're not leading. I don't know if that means anything or not, but remember on the bottom back in 2009, it was the Russell and NASDAQ that led the market up for the first couple of years. So I don't know if it means anything or not. All I know is that Google above 1185 would have been good and it's $44 lower than that. I don't want to be long that stock. So that's my two cents worth. So we'll see. Um, someone's asking a question about the gold. The give up point on the gold is that GDX. If we get the GDX below 20, you know, there's something wrong. We bought it at 2043. You don't have to risk very much. That's why we were watching it. It was really good divergence. Maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. But that's the kind of thing that, uh, you know, makes a ball game. Sometimes it's chocolate cake. Sometimes it's vanilla cake. But you just have to pay your money and take your choice. Right now, the GDX is still, uh, we're still in a profit. We bought it at 2043. It's trading at 2050. So, uh, and considering where gold is, that's not a bad deal. Now, if we get below that, uh, if we get below the 20, uh, 2025 level, uh, we'll probably uh, call uncle on this and then wait to see what happens. But uh, that's neither here nor there of what we're, what we're paying attention to. So pay attention to that. Um, someone's in, uh,
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. Going to wind up the show here. Uh, key things to watch is the fact that, uh, you know, we have been uh, – uh, seeing a little divergence here in the NASDAQ, it's not acting uh, uh, very good at all. I still go by the prediction that the S&P is going to be somewhere around 2740 uh, before the end of the week. I know that's only a couple days away, but that's just, uh, you know, technical analysis from the cheap seats here in uh, Tucson, Arizona. I, I did want to bring to your attention the fact that the uh, the Treasury bonds are uh, at a very uh, critical ABCD level that we just hit this morning at uh, 149. We're trading 149.10. Uh, that should be a level that holds uh, some good support, I would believe, in the uh, Treasury bonds. The uh, $64 question is uh, here. We'll put it up so you can take a look at it. Uh, this is what was done before the market opened, of course, but you'll be able to see the number down there was at 149, uh, and the low was 149.02. The number we're looking at was 149.04. And remember, I'm very bearish uh, long term. The uh, the uh, the grain, uh, those things. <laughs> well, I mean the the interest. Right. So whether that means anything or not, I am not sure. I had a couple of questions. Of, am I shorting the corn up there to December corn? Yes, sir, I did. I sold December corn at 410, and the reason why, it offered a very, very low, very, very low risk, and uh, that's really what I was looking for. Now, whether it's going to work that way or not, you know, I really don't know, but it's just a matter. Let's just double-check to see where it's trading. I haven't seen any 
and we're trading at 411. So I'm, it hit the number. There's 411 is the 78% level. Uh, we went short at uh, 410, and uh, we have got to stop at 411, 412. So we're risking uh, 413. We're risking 150 bucks on that. Whether that happens or not, I don't know, but we'll have to wait and see. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. We'll see you on the flip side tomorrow, and. Uh, do something nice for someone, folks, that has a lot less than you. That's very, very important to give back. It's the old payback. Nate Simmons.